So we're gonna call this one something a little different. I make videos, guys. I carry this camera around with me most of the time, and I pull it out at random intervals, and sometimes I talk to it, and sometimes I point it at stuff, and just video stuff, and the stuff piles up. I don't use everything that I video in every video, but at the behest of my true patrons out there, by the way, thank you, Patreon supporters. I've not mentioned that in a while. There are a few of you who consistently comment and communicate with me on the early release videos, and thank you for that. But I've got this footage piled up. I've got this footage piled up, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna watch it with you. I'm just gonna turn on the mic. I'm gonna look at the computer. I might, I might pre-edit some of the speeds on it, or I, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna unfold, but let's go through this footage together. It's a lot of weather footage, a lot, a lot of stuff. Y'all ready? Nighttime time lapses. Boy, that's a mouthful. Yeah, since getting a new camera, I've decided to try my hand at videoing night photography. Now, I say videoing it. What it is is a series of pictures on a tripod. And I actually bought this star tracker. It's something that I've known about since way decades ago, back in my big astronomy days. I knew people that had built custom sky trackers, you know, and had them geared up. And it's something I may want to delve into one day. But for a couple of hundred dollars, I was able to purchase my own. And I did. And I make these videos. Now, this is a night time lapse. This is when the Bradford pear tree was in full bloom. It was a full moon night. So I set the exposure so that it would appear to be like daylight. But this is a night sky. And you can see the blur in the clouds as they're blowing by. Very interesting to shoot this one. That Bradford pear tree only does this for a few days each year. And I was able to catch it just right. I like this time lapse a lot. One of my favorite scenes, the Orion part of the sky. There's the brightest star in the sky going over the roof of the house right there. Serious. Jen and I's Valentine's Day party, or no, it was a Mardi Gras ball. We were staying at a hotel casino in Shreveport, Bossier. We may have been Bossier. And I just set the time lapse up out of our hotel room window and we went out to the dance. Fun times, Jen. Fun times. Love you, baby. The first time I ever saw Starlink satellites was on this time lapse. I was just watching it and I see these these little trails of stars chasing each other. Now, I know what satellite trails look like. I've been seeing them my whole life, but I never seen them that high in the sky. That part of the sky at this time of the night, it is dark. It is on the other side of the earth from the sun and you usually cannot see satellites at this time in the sky. So you can see there's a plane that went by, but you can see my amazement as you can see these things drifting slowly amongst the stars. And I was just, I was kind of tripping out until I I saw it like pretty quickly a video. Somebody, I knew Starlink had like a line of satellites, but I didn't know that you could see them this late at night. It was because I was taking long exposures and they were really, really faint, but the camera was picking them up. Very neat. Yeah, this is the one where the mount slipped. I did not have it tight enough. One of my learning experiences, it just slid down as, as the night went on. It was not pretty. So I'll get better. I'll try to do better. And a happy good morning to you. We're gonna light off a smoke bomb and see what it looks like with the early morning dragonfly thermals. I'm just curious. We're going to see just how this thing is going to go off. There's actually a slight bit of wind, more than I thought. A lot of tree limbs down. Still ain't picked up from the hurricane. Where do we think these thermals are going to go? Let's have a look here. So we can watch the wind sock, sort of get an idea of where they're moving, how they're moving. And then when I throw the smoke bomb out there, we'll try to make it so the smoke goes right past the wind sock so we can start getting some, some details out of the whole thing.
Yeah, I told you dragonflies got in them and flew. I popped it during a lull, so let's see what's going on. Oh, we got downdraft. And we're gonna watch the whole thing in high speed just to save the boredom. <laughs> Just as I figured, nothing too exciting. Today we're gonna to be dealt almost zero wind. So the thermals are, is this good content? So the thermals are all gonna be going kind of straight up. You know, all the forecast models were indicating zilch as far, ow, that's hot. These things get hot. I think they use fire to make the smoke. I thought it was just magic, but you know, apparently there's oxidizers in there. It's earlier in the morning. It's like just past 9 a.m. Thermals are only strong enough for dragonflies and insects. There's no birds flying around, dew still on the ground, everything's still nice and dampened. But I want to see what it looked like. I want to see the dragonfly thermals in some smoke. I've never done one early like that. We'll look at it again later when it gets good, see what those cycles look like, and we'll know. As you can tell, sometimes I just show up somewhere that I'm going and, I, and I'm always looking for birds. I'm looking for weather. This was coming home from a, either work i was coming home from work i'm sure a pretty day like this and i saw this bird thermaling off of the trigger point back there behind my yard that i tell y'all always see birds connecting on well this is why i always look over there and see who's riding what and i don't know what this guy is hey, i think he's some kind of hawker I, I believe he may be an immature red tail perhaps you guys, you guys that know more about birds let me know that's but man i love watching him fly he flies good Birds fly good, man. I try, but they fly good. It's so funny. I lost him in the mix. I was zoomed in. And I, when I got back out to him, it was an old buzzard, old vulture. <laughs> yeah, I videoed him too. <laughs> got problems. <laughs> yeah, I snuck up on this boy. I seen this red-tailed hawk perched on a branch, and so I turned on the high speed on the camera. Check out the shot I got of this dude flying away. Once again, if you know what this is, let me know. Somebody mentioned a kike, maybe. He was good. He was good. He was riding it good. I was a bit jealous, I gotta admit, when I was videoing this guy. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever videoed. It was a huge gaggle of vultures. Buzzards, I call them. I know it's wrong. They're all, they'll always be buzzards to me. I don't know. But these boys was climbing good. They was in a core and they all busted out on glide and hopped over to the next one. And I got the whole thing on video. So I'm just gonna let it play out here and let you guys watch it just like I watched it. Sorry if it's boring. This is what you get on the Kylo channel. Enjoy it. Y'all see them all bust out and go on glide? Yeah. They were all turning, every one of them took a ride at the same time. Oh, well, they're turning again, huh? Or is that a new group? Another group coming. I'll be damned. Two gaggles of buzzards. Interesting. So we pull up to the field one day, and this jet comes screaming by at full, I don't know if it was full speed. He was over 200 miles an hour. Had to have been. So I got on the radio. I was like, man, if you'll give us another flyby, I'll film it in high speed. And he turned around and did this.
thank you, Mr. Jet Pilot Man. Thank you, and hopefully your jet fuel bill shall ever be low. What I was trying to accomplish this morning was there was a fog layer on the field. It looked pretty cool as I was going by, so I just turned the camera on. We started training at the Paramotor School, and I might have let this run for 20, 25 minutes. It's really been tying up my hard drive. What I inadvertently filmed as the edge of the windsock there was the first bit of thermal activity of the day. As you can see, it's very, very calm. One to two miles an hour of meteorological winds in place, but it starts to puff and go. And comment, comment below if you've learned anything about any of the videos that I've made or things that I've mentioned that you didn't know. That's one of the main reasons that I do this channel is so I can share the things that I learn with you. Because people I've learned things from shared them with me. And I have much respect for the exchange of information in this world. If it's enlightening, make a comment and let me know if anything I've ever said made sense to you. Because I've learned a lot myself personally since I've started making these videos. Well, it was a great idea for a video, but it seems that it's running long AF. So we're gonna do like a multi-part series of this stuff. If you like it, I mean, if you don't wanna see any of this crap, I mean, I guess you don't have to watch it. Hell, I don't know. To be honest, I've never focused on trying to be a good YouTuber. I mean, I try to make good videos, but that's different maybe. If you're not interested in my lifestyle, there's gonna be a lot of that going on in these videos. Yeah, but that's it. We're going to cut it here. We're going to do a multi-part series. That way we can keep these videos somewhere in the realm of 10 minutes or so. I mean, if I put down an hour and a half long video, I doubt a lot of people are going to sit around and watch that. We'll try it out and see. Y'all tell me what you think in the comments below. Much love, guys. Kyle out.